On the agenda tonight, we're taking a look at another featured artist in episode three of Under the Spotlight. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another episode of Under the Spotlight. If you do enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So tonight we are going to be joined by Taj Farrant and Taj is a young musician from Australia and at just 12 years of age he's taken the whole world by storm. Often referred to as a child prodigy, Taj has already amassed millions of views on YouTube with his guitar covers and original music. Taj not only plays but sings as well and recently released his debut single which is called Just Can't Sleep. He's jammed on stage with Santana, appeared on Australia's Got Talent, and also the Ellen DeGeneres show. Taj has a very bright future ahead. All of his social media links are in the description below, so check those out, subscribe to his YouTube channel, and without further ado, let's get Taj up on screen. Let's see what he has in store for us as he goes under the spotlight. have it. So, I mean, <laughs> considering Taj's age, that's just a crazy solo with so much feel and expression in there. And being a guitar teacher myself for over 15 years now, I've seen plenty of children playing guitar, kids and teenagers. And the thing is about Taj's playing is that he's got all of the techniques down and sometimes just having techniques down isn't enough. You can sometimes hear when techniques have been practiced but they're not quite mastered yet. Whereas Taj has the ability on the fretboard to apply the techniques with the feel of someone who is a lot older than he is. And when I mentioned about him being referred to as a prodigy in the intro of this video, Certainly when he was nine years of age, you can check out the videos on YouTube and there's no doubt that listening to him play the guitar at that age, you would think you're listening to an adult if you weren't watching the video. So it's this application of technique, but the mastery of those techniques, which makes Taj's playing so easy to listen to and you don't hear any struggling with the playing. He's just mastered it all at such a young age. So let's get into Taj's solo. We'll break it down a little bit, see what he's up to on that fretboard. First of all, one of the things that you will notice throughout this performance is his control of all of the techniques, the expression, but also his control of vibrato and bends. And you could class vibrato as very small bends just being controlled. And that's certainly what we get with Taj in this performance, but let's watch it from the beginning. Straight off the bat, we start with that really deliberate bend and technique wise, have a little look at Taj's right hand. Something that he will do is change from uh, holding the pick between his thumb and first finger and then he'll just palm that pick so that now he's got the thumb and his second finger free. And that's how he's starting this out. You can just see his red pick there. 
poking out the top of his hand, which means that when he starts up, he's actually got a little bit of his volume rolled off. So the tone's gonna be a little bit cleaner. We have this, again, playing thumb, second finger here on that right hand. And a really deliberate slow bend. The most important thing about doing a bend this slowly and making it so deliberate is that you have to reach your pitch. You have to reach your destination. And Taj, of course, does that. The destination is there. That's where we want to be. So you have to make sure that you get there with the bend. If you don't get there, it's just gonna sound a little bit dodgy, but it definitely doesn't sound like that when Taj is playing it. So we have this. Get to that destination. And then really deliberate vibrato, really controlled. And we have a little slide down as well. So the little slide that we have there, just that one fret slide with that third finger. And then that really deliberate vibrato and a little slide down. Really cool phrases. The important thing to point out here is the level of control that we've got with the bend to just touch that final destination exactly where we want to be. The application of that slide, the accuracy of the slide, the speed of it, and then going back down to first finger vibrato slide down. Technique wise, you don't hear any technique and this is the thing with great players, you never hear the techniques on the fretboard, you just hear the result of those techniques in expression. Let's have a little listen to the next phrase. Okay, so I don't know whether you spotted it there, but Taj just transitioned from playing with his thumb and his second finger into playing with his pick and now back to the thumb and the second finger. It's one of those things that blink and you'll miss it, but we were starting out with the slide and we have, this is all fingers and then he switches for the bend to get a more aggressive sound. And then we have, he bends up, again, lots of control here. Up, he then lets it down. And then lets it go back up again to exactly the pitch that he wants. So I might just rewind that so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And then applies vibrato. I'll take it back a little bit further so we get a bit more of an appreciation of that bend. And now look at the switch in the right hand. He's now holding the pick. And there it is, that. Doing the bend, letting it come down just a little bit. It's almost like. Letting that semitone just register before then slowly ascending to the top of the bend again. We've got a hell of a lot of control going on here in order to pick out notes and pitches within a bend. It's not something that you can suddenly do if you start playing lead guitar. Just picking out the tone bend and trying to get those notes to match up. That's difficult in itself. It will take a lot of practice to do that to begin with, but then picking out pitches, for example, going and getting that. And smoothly ascending and descending between tones and semitones is something that Taj does so well. There's so much control in there. It will fly under the radar unless you play guitar yourself. Or maybe you've tried to play guitar and you just started playing bends. You'll get a real appreciation of the difficulty on show here. But also when you bend and then start to apply vibrato, that's even more practice. So there are three applications of technique there that we've got with the tone bend down to semitone. Back up and vibrato, those three applications of technique in such a small space of time, but you're not aware of it. You don't hear the technique because it's so well executed. Another thing that I don't want to glaze over is the application of 
palm muting and dynamics in that little run that we had before the bend. So it means that when we come up from the change over to the pick, that would be it flat dynamically in terms of just picking without any palm mute in there. So having this like that. If we're applying that little drop in that bend, but what we've got is more of a palm muted sound. So we have this. And that muted sound of the string, which is. And it just is in there, it's so subtle, but listen to the run again. So you can hear that more staccato sound to that run. Kind of like that. So again, attention to detail, so much expression by not just playing a run as notes, but playing it dynamically and with something slightly different on the right hand, applying a little bit of palm mute just giving the notes a different personality. But let's resume the video to get into the next phrase. Love the way there, we're going a little bit more staccato again. We're holding that pick in that first finger and we've got this little delayed hammer on. So slide and that hammering on there. And also cutting off the notes. We've got that. Like that again, really cool, just changing the expression in the playing. And hitting pitches on the bend again. So we have this. Like that. Just picking out those notes. And it sounds like I do need a string change. These are very old strings and I'm getting a little bit of buzzing going on, but we'll work our way through it. Another thing to point out is that on that bend, it's all one. It's just all one pick with that right hand or a pluck with that second finger, just controlling those bends again. And let's have a little listen through to the whole phrase, but then we'll get the end part down. As well. Okay, so we have a similar theme here where we're sliding up from our D and again, still thumb, second finger. I take off a little bit of volume and kind of like that. So we've got a really cool little fill, of course, this is in C. So it means that we've got that little fill that then we descend with. So really cool change there. And we've got that little bend again. And then that kind of really deliberate vibrato that he just holds on, controls it really nicely. But let's jump into the next phrase. So we've got this little slide up. Let me just have a little listen to that again. Make sure we get the notes right. Okay, there's a little bar there with the first finger. Slide up third finger. And have a little listen to this almost incidental third finger on the A where we have this. And it's hardly in there, but it is in there enough that you can just hear it. Kind of like that. And then the vibrato at the end. Again, really slow and controlled. 
Okay, and then we go into a crazy bend there. So he's picking up pitches again with the bend, and I would need a lot lighter gauge strings in order to pull off this bend, but we've got, I'm gonna cheat and use my whammy bar, we've got this. Those are the notes that we're hearing and going. That kind of thing, obviously uh, working away around it here with my whammy bar, but Taj is doing that without the whammy, just using his first finger. So that's the start destination and that's the note that Taj just tweaks it up to. So crazy bend, but not only a crazy bend in terms of the pitch that we're ascending to, but the control to hit the notes on the way up. It's really a feature of this solo, just the control that Taj has with vibrato and bends, just picking out these pitches all the time. I'm just gonna have another little listen to that phrase. Okay, so we've got this little, that kind of thing going on, and we get this, there's a little bend in there as well, just to mix it up. So we almost get that corner response of the first time through and go. And that little bend just breaks it up a little bit to make it almost like that corner response, but make it interesting in the middle. Rather than just having the same thing all the way through, it's just thrown in a little variation there, which means that your ear will just pick that out. And then he goes back into the original version of the riff and then slides up. Let's just see where we then slide up to after. Really deliberate bend there. So we've got this. And we do eventually make it to that destination again. Really deliberate bend here. And it's that little delayed hammer on in there again. And eventually getting up to that point of the bend of that tone. And a little run down there, I'm just gonna turn up my... Just like that to finish off that phrase. But let's get into the end of this solo now. We have a tasty lick there. And let me just take that back a little bit because we've got a really cool blending of. Really cool blending of bluesy bends. Okay, so we've got this. That was pretty close to what was going on there. And I think the way that Taj is playing it, he might be using that little finger, or let's have a little look at that run again. Okay, yes, so when he plays the bend, third finger, and then, he's now using that little finger for the rest of it. And I think rather than the little finger there, he then transitions over to the third finger. So there's that. I would normally play it with, with that third finger rather than transitioning to that little finger. So it might feel a little bit weird. And then I played that two separate ways, you might not have noticed, but with a little finger pull off, and third finger slide. Taj is doing the slide there. And my muscle memory for some reason wants to, 
wants to do a pull off there. But I think that's roughly in the same kind of ballpark, but it's so well executed here. Taj just throws it in there and it's so relaxed. It's so easy to listen to because the technique is spot on. The, the whole reason that I can get it anywhere close is because the notes are so clear when Taj is playing it that you can have a little fiddle around with your pentatonic shape one, the major pentatonic shape one here in C and try and find some of these notes. And like I said, when we're... You'll be able to find the notes in there because they're so clear when they're being played. Sometimes when you're listening to a player and they play a run, it's really difficult to work it out because it was a little bit messy. So you can't really hear the notes clearly. Let's just jump in for the extended ending that we get as well. And almost a little bow at the end there from Taj. So right at the end there. That kind of thing. And sliding up. I love that little bit of whammy bar at the end as well. Let me just take that back again because these are the little touches that when you're listening to normally a kid perform and somebody who's slightly younger playing the guitar doesn't have the experience, they don't do that kind of thing. Just placing in a little bit of expression at the end, a little dip on the whammy bar and then to vibrato, the top end of that C major chord. So let's have another little listen to that. And there it is. It's just being played like somebody who is a lot older, but not just that. Somebody who's got experience at playing and knows that just if, if we did end and went, that'd be okay, but it's not, it's not like that. I mean, it's the kind of finish, you know, It's like that real kind of expression at the end that you'd get really with jazz. I mean, there, obviously, you know, playing that kind of ninth chord is going to sound very jazzy, but that just a little dip in vibrato is something that's just a cherry on top. And Taj has all of these cherries on top of all of his playing all the time. Let me just take you through that end lick that we had from Taj there, really bluesy sound here. We have this, that kind of thing. So that uh, second finger comes over, 10th fret, or at least when I play it, that the second finger came over there. And that's what's happening. So when you get a nice hammer on pull off with that little finger. If you want to, you can kind of reverse it. Like that, or still bringing over that second finger. It's gonna sound really bluesy here because of the fact that we're just hammering on with that little finger, whereas before, Taj was bending there. So he went before getting up to that tone which will then be in the major scale again. So then it'll start to make a little bit more sense and sound less bluesy when you're bending up to the tone above. If I went like that, it's not gonna sound bluesy at all because I'm just playing major scale. The blues all comes about when you start introducing minor notes and notes from the minor scale into that major sound. Because we're in C here, it means that any note that is gonna be a minor is just gonna have a slightly different sound to it. So when we go that just throws in a little bit instead of, and you can hear that second version 
It's too happy, especially with what we've just heard with Taj. He's really pushing it into that area of the blues and really exaggerating those bends to emphasize that. But there is so much subtlety in the technique being applied here by Taj that it just sounds great. And he's just got that expression through the fretboard and he gets into his playing. And none of these things that he's doing are things that he's been told to do. For example, when he just opened up that volume a little bit, at about 38 seconds into the performance, he hasn't been told on 38 seconds into the performance, just turn that up. He hasn't been told to do that. These are all decisions that he's making on the fly just to open up his sound a little bit. So he's got that expression through his instrument because he knows exactly how to get what he can hear in his head and where he wants to go with his sound, which is something that usually you only get with years and years and years and years of playing. But I think Taj has just got an affinity for playing the guitar, but playing in an expressive way. But let's have another little look at the performance and the solo, and hopefully we can appreciate it on a little bit of a deeper level now, looking at what Taj is doing with all of this technique. amendment to the video, when I was showing you that final lick, I was doing that hammer on and pull off, whereas Taj, he's doing a slide, kind of like that. So you can slide through it or you can hammer on and pull off. Uh, Taj is doing the slide here. That's just something I wanted to point out. But a huge thank you to Taj for getting involved and sending us over his solo so that we can take a look at it and appreciate what he's achieving on that fretboard. As I said in the intro, check out the description below where you'll find all of the links to Taj's website, social media, YouTube channel. Go and check him out there. Buy his single that he released at the end of last year and and just show your support because he is certainly one of the talents to watch on the guitar, but also as an artist, given the fact that he sings as well, a lot of players just play the guitar and never venture into singing because if you haven't got a natural affinity for it, it is very difficult to learn to sing, but Taj is just coming on leaps and bounds vocally as well. So keep an eye on him. As I said, just join in with all of his social media sites. But thank you guys for watching as well. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will catch you guys at the next episode of Under the Spotlight. Rock!